Let's head down to Dollar Tree. We're going to grab us a paper towel holder. We also need some pie tins. Grab two of those. First thing you're going to do is put some hot glue on the bottom of the paper towel holder. Just a few spots will do it. We need this to hold it on and keep it in place. Once you got the hot glue on, work a little fast and put it right in the middle. Once you get it there, put some more hot glue around the edges and that's going to hold it down. The more hot glue, the better. It's going to hold some weight. Don't worry if it doesn't look good. We're going to cover that all up. First thing you're going to do is put some hot glue right on the edge of the pan and take that rope and stick it on there. This is going to be the beginning of putting all the rope around the edges and through the pan. Put a little bit of dab of glue along the edges, a little bit at a time, and start circling it with the rope. You're going to work your way all the way around on the edge. Make sure this one looks nice because this is the starter piece. Once you get around, put some glue, and you're just going to keep going. Just keep working that glue, applying the rope as you go. It's going to hold it really nice. Once you get to the middle, it's time to get it a little bit on the inside there. But it's going to be time for us to start working it up the paper towel holder you're going to do a couple of twists keep it tight around the whole middle i do about four or five at a time and then you're just going to push all of the loose parts right back put some glue on top of the rope and around the sides and then loop it again this is what's going to hold the rope and keep it secure while you hold it in place let that glue take effect and hold it and then once you got that dry, go ahead and work a little bit of glue on the sides of the metal, and that's going to keep it in place. Once you put the glue on, again, wrap it a few times, hold it while the glue dries, and then you can do a few spots at a time. You don't need to glue every layer. Just keep working its way up. I went about four of these ropes and got it all the way up to the top. Once you get to the top, we're just going to go ahead and put some glue right at the top there, and we're going to pinch it together. That's all that's needed, and that's how we finished it off. The next part is we're going to take the two baskets and place them on top of the pan. That's going to help us with our height location. Take a zip tie, and you're going to go right above them. Poke it right through the ropes. It's real easy to do. Once you get that first one through, stick the basket through, flip it around, and put it right back through the rope again. Go ahead and cinch up that zip tie and make it tight. We're going to go ahead also and work on the baskets on top. Once we get all of those together, remember those marbles? You're going to dump both of those bags straight into the bottom pin. Take the basket and your finished project and put it right on top. And look how freely that spins. Now, this is what we're going for. A rotating fruit basket. Easy to get to for the kids for all of their selection. I hope this inspired you to build your own Dollar Tree rotating fruit basket. Thanks for watching Home Talk. First thing we want to do on these crates is we're going to cut an angle here so we need a mark. What I decided to do on this when I've done this project before is take the second rung down right at the corner here and I'm going to use my speed square because it's going to give me a nice perfect 45 degree angle. And that's where I'm going to mark it just like that. I will then turn it around and going to mark it the same on the opposite side. The reason is we're going to cut these at a 45 degree angle on what's going to be the front. All right, we're going to mark both of these crates, as you can see, and then we will cut them and I will show you how we take them apart. Whenever using a jigsaw, always be careful. You just want to take it slow. If you need to use a handsaw because you don't have a jigsaw, that's fine too. Once we cut the front part of these boards off, what you're going to do is take two of them, put it right here where your second slat is, is you'll mark on the back side here, just like that. Leave this one for here, and you'll do the same over here. Mark this, just like that, and then what we'll do is we'll use our saw to cut those lines. Okay, now that we got this cut, this is going to be our support. So what we'll do is we'll put it here. You can use glue, a screw. I've got a nail gun, so I'm just going to put one in real quick. Just like that. We'll go ahead and do the other side. We have got our first crate done right here. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. We want to get rid of any rough edges. 
I've got a little bit of a burn mark from my blade. We'll get rid of that. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing exactly with the same marks and the same cuts on the second crate. And then I'll show you where we're going to go from there. Okay, now that we've got it cut and we've got it sanded, it's time to put on a coat of stain. I always use a towel to put the stain on instead of using a brush. I feel like I can really get some penetration on with it. Now, what we're gonna do is once we get these all stained, I'm gonna put a coat of polyurethane on it. Anybody that's done any staining before will know that poly gives it a very smooth finish. Now, if you're able to get a stain that's a poly and a stain together, go ahead and do that. That way you can just put one coat on. It'll make it a little bit of a quicker job for you. And it's definitely just gonna take one coat. So go ahead and wipe it on. We're gonna do these to both our crates and we'll be back. Okay, now that we've got it all stained and coated with a polyurethane, we're gonna go ahead and glue the top rim of this so we can put the other crate on top. So it doesn't take much, because the last thing we want is for it to spill out over the edge or anything. So I just take some glue, line it right here, take the other crate, line it up in the back corners right here. Down it goes. Perfect. Now, no, needs, no need to clamp or anything like that. The weight of it will sit here. Let's let it sit a couple hours and we'll show you the final product. And here it is, a fruit and vegetable display. It's really great, especially with the family, because anytime you have fruit and vegetables out front, they're gonna wanna use those for snacks. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna take everything out. All of it. Every little knickknack that just causes chaos. The next step is to cut out a piece of foam board or paper and make sure it fits properly in the bottom. Go ahead and remove that. Then what we're gonna do is put little marks and go ahead and place your utensils one at a time where you want them placed in your drawer. This is gonna be used to do our outline. Next step is to go ahead and mark with a pencil where you want your boards to go. Then we're gonna use any type of ruler or straight edge and you're gonna mark all along your edges and your marks exactly where you want your boards to go from one side of the drawer to the other. Don't forget, get it as straight as possible. I used a square on this one to make my lines as straight as possible. Once that's done, it's time to go ahead and get your tape measure out. And you can see on this one, it's 17 inches. There's gonna be two of those exactly the same size. Those are gonna be our first two cuts. So here I am marking my one by two piece of board, 17 inches, and giving it a cut. I'm able to use my miter saw, but you can use a, a regular hand saw on a job like this since it's so small. Go ahead, cut the first piece. Here's my second piece I'm marking, and I will cut that one also. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two boards and I will place them on the outline where they go. Then I'm gonna measure the other marks. So I got three of them at 11 inches. Once I cut those boards, I'm gonna lightly mark where they're gonna go. And then you can use screws, but I went ahead and I have a nail gun. So I'm gonna use that because I have it in my shop. So then very carefully, always wear eye protection. I'm gonna use my nail gun to go ahead and place the boards where they go. On a nail gun, two are gonna be perfect. If you're using screws, go ahead and pre-drill and put one screw in. Remember, it doesn't have to be super strong. All it's gotta do is be put into place. You can use glue on the edges if you'd like. Once I get that first one done, I'm gonna go ahead and put my other boards all together. As you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the last nails in this one. And when we come back, I'll show you the final product. And here it is, the final project. Look how good that looks. This just looks so nice and organized. And I'm so glad you joined us, and I can't wait to see you again on Home Talk. Mm -hmm.